My name is Narihiko Basara. Today's topic is an open source software enthusiast today at the Japanese security vendor. This an open source enthusiast is just me, so this is my personal story. If you if you are, but if you are also the open source enthusiast, it this story might interest uh, for you. Anyway, start. Agenda. Today's agenda. At first, I want to introduce myself, and uh, I also introduce my company, and. Uh, I also introduced my activity as an open source software enthusiast and uh, what I learned from the open source activity that uh, I try to bring to the company. Conclusion. Then conclusion. Okay. Who am I? I'm Narihiko Ogasawara, as I said. But uh, in typical Japanese style, we write uh, family name first, then given name last. So, Ogasawara Naruhiko is a Japanese style. Maybe most East Asian countries have the same way. So, please call me Naruhiko or Narusan. <laughs> And uh, I'm a Japanese open source enthusiast, uh, for example, Ruby Office, Ubuntu, uh, desktop printing, like uh, cups or uh, something else, etc. And uh, I also an employee of the Japanese security vendor. Uh, senior security engineer, as a senior security engineer, mainly focused on the DevSecOps or SAST, uh, static analysis of uh, software code. And uh, international to developer, I always use Scala language. And uh, my hobby is uh, river kayaking. And uh, before talking my story, I want to introduce my company's overview. Of course, this is a community event. I want to PR any uh, of my company, but uh, as a background, you this is uh, helps your understanding. Our company is a typical third-party security testing vendors. Lots of testers is there, mostly 100 uh, security vendors, uh, security testers, pen testers here, but uh, not a tech geek company. And uh, we are not a uh, OSS-centric software company. I mean, uh, OS, uh, using, uh, developing or using OSS is uh, not our uh, common business. And uh, of course, we use uh, several software, both of proprietary and open source software. Proprietary one is a first, for example, Microsoft Office and uh, BAP Suite. BAP Suite is a very uh, well-known uh, security testing, pen testing software. And uh, we also use uh, some OSS, for example, LibreOffice. I will talk about it later. And uh, develop s s some software, but not published uh, as OSS, at least uh, for now. And uh, of course, we uh, using several security standards, standards developed by WASP. WASP stands for Open Web Application Security Project, or CIS, Center for Internet Security. 
this two is a very common uh, standardization group and uh, we use a uh, lot of standard for example MSS, uh, ASVS, MASVS uh, or uh, else and uh, as I said our companies are not OSS centric but uh, and uh, not a super geek company but uh, we still have open mind so that's why I belong to my company. Next, I want to introduce my activity as an open source enthusiast, but uh, this is a very old days, so now I'm a very lazy. My activity is less and less, but uh, I did these things. For, for example, one is a translation, for example, the user interface help or online document for LibreOffice or Capus or sometimes Ubuntu, GNOME or something like that. And having the talks in several events like here, I love to uh, talk in COSCAP. COSCAP is a very nice event, very active, very powerful, very uh, interesting event. Uh, I'm proud to speak here. Anyway, and I organizing uh, some OSS events, for example, LibreOffice AGR conference and uh, open source as uh, open to the Asia Summit. And uh, if I find a bug uh, for my using open source software, I file a bug ticket uh, for the bug tracking systems. And uh, sometimes join open international discussions via bug tracking system or forums or mailing list. And uh, I did sometimes a very little code hack. So throughout the, these kind of the uh, activities, I, what I learned from the open source software activity that uh, that I try to bring the company. First is uh, don't guess, just ask. Second is send pull requests to upstream instead of internal forking. Third one is uh, we have right to fork it if upstream seems inactive. Okay, first one, don't guess, just ask. Maybe uh, we Asians tend to try to guess why when we don't understand something about the behavior of software or operation of community. But uh, especially in open source software, there is someone in front of you whom, whom you can ask. So, Always, it is better to ask than to guess. Oh, this is a bug or expected behavior. Uh, why this so this kind of guessing is a, a waste of time. Just asking is a better. Of course, there is a language barrier, but machine translation should help you out. Not only help you, uh, but also help me. <laughs> anyway, so this is a one example. Don't ask, just ask. Uh, don't guess, just ask. Um, 
maybe two or three years ago, my colleague says, hey, the new version of this software has different behavior than priority one. I guess this is to be a bug. Wait and see, it will be solved. But uh, I thought this should be a bug or not. Uh, I I am I'm not sure this should be a bug or not. So I said uh, the developer has their own fo user forum. Why not to ask this is a bug or expected change? So my colleague said, "Oh, okay, I will." Then uh, later, oh, they said it is expected. We must consider changing its use. So this is uh, several years ago, but uh, nowadays there, there is a culture of listening in forums, etc., without me having to say anything. Second, Send pull request to upstream instead of internal forking. When we find something wrong with the source we are using, or something that beha uh, behaves differently from what we want, we tend to solve it to our own hand. I mean the international forking. For example, write a document, don't use this function or uh, just fork the software and uh, fix it internally or uh, something else. This is internal forking is very common to us. However, if there are other people who have the same problem. Fixing it upstream will increase the number of happy people. Also, we will not have to maintain our own solutions. I mean the so internal folks. If upstream uh, extends the something new, so we internal folk also extend to track the latest ish, uh, latest uh, features. This is a uh, very tough. So uh, it always it is better to send a pull request upstream than to fork internally. This is another example of the, this way. Uh, also, maybe uh, several years ago, our colleagues say we found an error in WASP standard. We will not use it as it is, but we'll modify it. I mean, the modify it internally. Hmm. So I said, hmm, WASP published their standard in GitHub. I think we should send a pull request or file in an issue. So my colleague say, oh yes. And uh, the request has accepted the standard has been fixed, thanks. So this is a, uh, this successful experience changed their mind and sending pull requests is also now our usual culture. Third one is uh, we have right to fork if upstream seems inactive. In the previous lesson, I told that it is better to send a pull request upstream than fork. But, uh, uh, however, uh, when the upstream project does not seem to be working, it is better to dare to fork to increase activity and increase the number of collaborators. 
Forking is also an important freedom and power of open source software. If uh, upstream is still active, you should not fork. Uh, instead of the fork, uh, you should send a true request. But uh, if upstream is not working, uh, you can always write to fork. This is the power of open source software. I have uh, two examples about the, this lesson, so I pick the, these two. Uh, first one is a JOpen document. Maybe some of you already remember the name. JOpen document is a Java library to manipulate open document format. Open document format is a LibreOffice native format. And this is a powerful and useful library, but unfortunately, development has stopped since 1914. See the slide why ODF is the best intermediate format for report generation system in COSCAP 2020. So, this is even though this Library is, has stopped uh, seven years. I, our business is highly depends on the, this library. So I think the original author via mailing list, but there is no answer. So I decided to fork it as my personal project. I mean, the, my GitHub, uh, project. She has, I told this last course cap, so please check out, check this out in the slide or video uh, in last course cap. But, and uh, I have small update about this from last uh, talk. My colleague sent some pull requests to support ODF 1.3 and several functional updates. This is not, now this is not my project. This is our project. This became our project. And uh, now we are considering it is, it will be our company's official OSS. I mean, uh, we don't, now we don't have an uh, organization in GitHub, uh, but uh, we will create the, our own organization and move my project into uh, my, our organization. Okay. Next example of example three should be uh, WASP Mobile Top 10. WASP Mobile Top 10 is a top 10 threat list for mobile applications maintained by WASP. WASP is a mainly web application security project, but uh, they also uh, consider the mobile application. This is a WASP mobile top 10 is similar than WASP top 10. Maybe this is a very common uh, for web developers. Web, web application top 10 threat list is a WASP top 10 is a web application the top 10 threat list. But uh, unfortunately, WASP Mobile Top 10 is the uh, last version is 2016. Uh, this is six years ago. And uh, there is a GitHub issue about updating in 2020, but no response. So I asked the JSEC people. JSEC is a Japan Smartphone Security Association. 
。This is a Japanese local station found to create security environment on smartphone for both users and service providers. I asked the JSEC members to want something like the WASP mobile top 10. Let's make our、uh, one ourselves and, and say to WASP, hey, we made something like this. Can we help you out? So, JSEC people were amused and I became a The working group leader, and、uh, we decided to implement this as this year's activity. So, I mean, uh, uh, this is、uh, also、uh, another forking, and、uh, if we create the very good fork, we can contribute back to the WASP. This is also the open source way. Conclusion If your company is a very techy company and your company is open source,、uh, open source centric company,、uh, this is the best. Uh, hosting and contributing to open source in the enterprise is very important. But it is also important to bring the open source culture、uh, into the company, even if only partially. If you are an open source enthusiast, try to bring open source culture to your company or your organization. It, it will surely make your life easier. Like me. Okay, thank you.